little bit funny and uh, satirical in the other senses too. So these plays are all about the elite societies and uh, their manners, okay, their actions. So in today's lecture, we will be talking about the introduction, the background, or you will you will definitely we will be talking about some of the lifestyles of the people, some of the manners of the people, etiquettes of the people, and who are they? So we will be discussing in today's lecture. Uh, I just need to know about your understanding of comedy of manners, because by the name simply, you see that okay, it is a comedy of manners and what are the manners so you will tell one by one and i hope so that you have taken your teas and coffees so that you can participate and speak in every discussion whether you are sleeping whether you are half in uh, half sleeping or full sleeping so you have to participate okay yes so what is your understanding of comedy of manners. Starting from you, Nafi. Yes. Yes, Amber, Amreen, Isa, Farhi. So, what are your views about the comedy of manners? When you see this title, comedy of manners, so what is it all about? Yeah, say something. Anyone? Are you people even there? Or have you just joined your classes and just went back to sleep again? Sir, social interaction of people, whether they meet the certain social standards or not. Okay, that's good. Yeah, anyone else? Kainat, Mahnoor, Muhammad Bakas, Saira, Yubna, Hamda, Humaira, Heather. Speak it up, say something. So we can say that it's a star on the women, ladies and gentlemen live in sophisticated society. Means they show highly ethics, but uh, style on their ethics. Okay, that's good. Yes, anyone else? Fatima Amir. This starting must be fresh, like all those students who didn't participate in the previous semester. I think that this is their time. Every semester and every class is their time. So they must, but why they do not? To say something about the understanding of the comedy of manners, should I call you one by one? This is not okay. Sir, so actually, this genre uh, refers to English comedies and uh, written uh, English comedies written and performed in the Restoration period, and um, it is concerned with social usage and the question of uh, whether or not the uh, characters meet certain social standards or not, and all these things. 
Okay, that's good too. Good. Yes, Shahbaz. Shahbaz and is the satirical uh, comedy that taught the manners of the society yeah that's good okay uh, amreen amjad Sir, satirical questions or comments? Only the uh, satirical comments. Sir, pata nahi hai. Wo to pad ke pata chalega. Okay. Hamda. So it is about satirical and realistic manners and social standards. Okay. Yes, Amber. In simple words, sir, uh, we can say that it is a comedy. Um, <laughs> which makes fun of the beliefs attitudes and behaviors of a certain social class um, is it right yes it is everything is right in comedy of man uh, so i think that we have certain views about the comedy of man uh, what my understanding is that comedy of manners is all about it is the manners. Comedy is a genre that we already know, but it is a subgenre of the plays and the drama. And manners means the etiquettes, the way of living, the way of showing your etiquettes to the way of showing your interactions with the people to showcase your artificial wit to the people and most of the time the actual wit to the people sometimes it is about the dresses that you wear sometimes it is about the food that you eat it is all about the language that you speak it is all about the manners you follow Comedy of manners is all about the interaction, the social styles, social standards, the lead showiness of the of the people. So it is all about you can say the etiquettes and the mannerisms of the people. What they do, living in that society, living or enjoying that class or be a part of the class of that elite class so it is all about their actions their 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 deeds specifically whenever they are decorative hypocritic in their approaches in their actions with the people so these things are actually encapsulated in the plays of that time the history of the comedy of manners it, the, the comedy of manner started from the restoration period in which you see that many things related to the elite class were mocked many things related to the elite class were mocked and uh, it was not you can say mocked by themselves it was not especially on the other side we see that they were no active critics in that, that at that time the influence was very clear 
you see that James II, who actually returned from his exile from France on 1660 in the period of Renaissance, when there was supposedly end of the Puritanism on 1660. So James II, he actually returned. He was restored because he was living his life in exile and banishment in France. And he was, again, called to be the king of England on 1660. So when he was there, he did enjoy a, a, a gaiety life over there, a life full of uh, pleasures, the, the life full of, uh, you can say, uh, sexual desires, the life full of voluptuousness. So he enjoyed, especially, specifically, he was famous for his gayism, his homosexuality. When he, when he came back from France to take the rule of the new kingdom that was recently restored, then he also brought with him the social standards, the lifestyle, even though the concept of homosexuality or gayism in England also. It means that he brought the ideals, ideals of literature, the structures of literature with him. He brought the dressing style, the food, then, then this uh, kind of, you can say, uh, sexuality with him from the France. And then, because he was the king, and after the, uh, the Puritan age, when people were banned and restricted not to enjoy the full life of their own, then after, when they got the chance to enjoy everything freely, especially when the king is also, you can say, like, uh, he's also independent and enjoying everything, so then the society became, you can say, again, it, 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 it ran again on the pace of that, you can say, uh, on, on the sexual perversions. So now the people, they do not care about their moral attitudes, their religiosities, they do not care about the cultural taboos, the cultural boundaries, rather they were all involved and indulged in the floppery of the new ideals and the new things that were based on the immorality or unethical assumptions. And now you see the society is, is with a, a new spirit with a new spirit of a new life, of a new style, of a new standard appeared at that time in the reign of James II from 1660 onwards. So that was the initiation of the comedy of manners when the manners of the elite class were ridiculed, were discussed, were represented by the writers of that, ta that time. Similarly, what is our concern about the comedy of manners and how this was the second wave of comedy of manners that started before the Victorian or in the Victorian era? Okay, so there are two waves, I would say. The first is of the restoration comedy of manners. That is separate subject because before studying the Victorian comedy of manners that started from the Victorian age started from 1837 to 1901. So the writers who wrote at that time in the era of Queen Victoria, that is a later or the second wave of comedy of manners. But now we are talking about the background of the comedy of manners that started from the age of restoration, okay? So now you see that the fabricated, the fabricated or 
the you can say the false behaviors etiquettes of the people are actually showcased in this case in the comedy of manners of the restoration period and the second wave of the restoration period in which there are <coughs> gb shaw and uh, then we have henry gibson okay and many of the other uh, ernest heming sorry what is his name okay so there are many writers belonging to that age who are you can say the, uh, not the founders but the representatives of the comedy of manners in the victorian era but now in today's lecture because you know that every lecture starts with a background starts with a context of 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 that subject so now i'm just going to share uh, one article that is about the detailed information characteristics or the features of the restoration comedy that how did it start and how it was the concept of comedy of manners was taken again in the second phase by the victorian playwrights and comedians okay so i'm just sharing my screen with you people to know more about comedy of manners because when you talk about the concept of comedy of manners in a sense that why this subject has gained so popularity in the time of james ii or in the time in the time of monarchy so let me be clear that the people especially the elite class or the royal class they were not interested in to discuss the 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 poor or the issues of poverty at their time in the society they were not interested in to discuss those issues they were neither interested in to talk about the moralities they were neither interested in any of the thing that talks about the virtues or the moral interest of the people they were neither interested in any of the things they were only interested to enjoy their lives at full so that life is full of excitement that life is full of joys full of pleasures and they do not care about the other people like the poor classes mediocre classes they do not care about so it is a type of like if you say that the comedy of manners is all about the showy actions of the elite class so they show their actions they show their etiquettes and manners and if you want to describe the comedy of manners with one word that is hypocrisy so this one word describes the whole you can say the age of the comedy of manners that is hypocrisy hypocrisy or the hypocritic behaviors hypocritic minds characters the all the time have the dual nature the dual nature all the time like uh, why they are actually ridiculed most of the time they were ridiculed because whenever they have to if they have to be good with the people they are good with the people but for their own interests like internally they were not good but apparently they were showing goodness to the people so this is the hypocrisy of those people that they were just showing the people how sophisticated we are they were showing the people how well mannered we are but in reality they were not alike they were not the same means that this one describes the comedy of manners i i would say in a good manner so starting from the introduction of comedy of manners that started in 1660 and ended 
not ended, but it remained continued. But you know that there was another age, and after that age, we see there was there was a break from this one. But after that, it started again before the Victorian and in the Victorian era. Okay, so there are many causes. There are many causes. You see that even though the the Puritan movement was also the cause. Because you see that in the previous era, in the Puritan age, all the theaters and stage performances were banned. Actors and actresses, they were not allowed to perform anything. Okay, it means that they were all restricted. Dancing performances were banned. Musical performances were banned. So all type of writings that arouse feelings of uh, uh, unethical or I would say emotional type of things. So they were also banned. Writers were blacklisted. And now when the people got the chance to talk about their emotions, those emotions that they were withheld in the minds and in the hearts of the people for so long, just because of the fear of the Puritans, they were actually reopened. Not only theaters were reopened, not only dancing performances and all of the other things were reopened, but the minds of the people, they were also reopened, but with a new spirit. And people, when they were restricted for a while, and after that, when they got independence, so suddenly they were totally out of control what to do with this ecstasy, what to do with this happiness, what to do with this excitement. So that is the reason that they started ridiculing. They started doing some, uh, I, I, I would say, some uh, poor things in that society, some ill-mannered things in that society. And they were totally unknown what to do with this. OK, so now we see that we have a context and a reason that why comedy of manners was written. So you see that. Uh, Charles II was an active and a trusted patron of the drama. Okay, let me maximize my screen. Okay. So Charles II was an active and a trusted patron of the drama soon after his restoration in 1660. He granted exclusive play staging rights to the King's Company and the Duke's Company, led by two middle-aged Caroline playwrights, Thomas Kilgrew and William Davenant. So Charles II was the active member and patron of this type of drama of comedy of manners. Because he his kingdom was restored, his rule was restored soon after the Puritanism, and uh, when he came to England to legitimize his throne. He came with a new spirit. He came with a new idea. And uh, all those ideas were also practiced in England also, the ideas of the France. Then sexually explicit language. Sexually explicit language was encouraged by King Charles II personally and by the rapid style of his court. Because I have already told that King uh, Charles II, he was a king, he was a man who was actually, who was full of joys, full of uh, excitement, full of passion, and uh, full of the idea of uh, homosexuality that he has actually learned while living the life of his excitement in the France. So he was living over there. So there was a strong influence, a strong influence of the of the lifestyle of the French people on Charles II. And when he came back, so he definitely practiced, practiced the same things on not only not only the literature, but everything around him. So now you see that sexually explicit language, there was no restrictions. There was 
no restriction in that at that time to use sexual language or sexually explicit language even though there were many enunciations of the language explanations of the language and uh, they were not with the sophisticated language but that was with with the sexual language there were some sexual abuses also okay, so this type of you can say traumas were firstly introduced and once again we are studying only the introduction of comedy of manners this is not what we are going to do in the next class but this is all about the background this is all about the context of the comedy of manners because we need to understand the roots of the comedy of manners first and then we will be studying the text so historian george norman clark argues we argue about that what this restoration drama is all about the best known fact about the restoration drama is that it is immoral so with one word because whenever there is sexual explicity whenever there is voluptuousness whenever there is some sensuous arousal in any society so that society will definitely be called immoral because these are the things that make the make the people that make the societies they make the cultures and the courts immoral unethical nonsensical it it means that this is another good word to talk about or to describe the comedy of manners that is immoral it was immoral there was no morality the dramatist did not criticize the accepted morality about gambling drink love and pleasure generally or try like the dramatists of our own time to work out their own view of character and conduct so this is the hypocrisy of the elite class like they were not into it that they will be discussing their own lives their own i would say that immoral things like uh, they are they are gambling they are drinking they are involved in pleasures in love affairs in extra matrimonial relationships they were not into it but they were just to show their selves as you can you can call it as well mannered people but if you just look deep into their lives or into their characters what they are they are totally the wreck of destruction it means the dramatist did not criticize the accepted morality about gambling drink love and pleasure generally <clears throat> but their view of character and conduct what they did was according to their respective inclinations to mock all the restraints so now what they are doing they are not doing they are not criticizing the wrong deeds they are not mocking and criticizing the bad actions the vices of the societies rather they are actually mocking and criticizing the restraints the restraints the things that are creating a hurdle in the ways of make you understand about the about the subject of comedy of manners in a uh, i would say in a fully manner so characteristics are basically about the texts about the subjects about the societies and the faculties how they are taken how they are represented what were their actions what they were doing in that in that time so this is all about you can say the behaviors and the other things
So the comedy of manners is a kind of, okay, you can also take notes one by one. Okay, because you have to just make one statement about one point just to make yourself comfortable with the understanding of the idea that what is all about. So comedy of man is the kind of comedy which portrays the ridiculous behavior pattern of the individuals of an aristocratic society. So first of all, it is it portrays the ridiculous behavior pattern of the individuals of an aristocratic society. So what is an aristocratic society? The royal, the elite class, the rich people, the wealthiers of an age or of the time. So their manners, they were portrayed in a ridiculous manner, in a ridiculous uh, behavior pattern okay, of the elite class. So this is the first point that we can understand that it comedy of manners talks about the ridiculous behaviors, the non serious behavior, the unfriendly behaviors. It is concerned with the coarseness of morality, faithlessness, jealousy, intrigue, etc. of an artificial society. So it's concerned with the coarseness Coarseness in morality. Coarseness is a kind of you can say the roughness, roughness. Like when when something is not plain, when something is not organized, when something is not managed. So you can say that it is the coarseness of immorality. It means immorality is not enough. It is not the society that is immoral, but rather society is coarse too unorganized, disintegrated, unmanaged. So we see the faithlessness. So there is no one man or one human being who is faithful. And this comedy of the comedy of manners is full of faithless characters. Faithlessness. Because whenever I have talked about when I talked about the concept of uh, hypocrisy. So hypocrisy is actually the dualness. And if it is the duality of the character, of the personality of every individual, so how can you maintain the faithfulness, the loyalty? You cannot do that. Because internally you are something else, but externally you are something else. Externally you are actually making yourself uh, you are considering yourself good with the people who are interacting with them, but internally you are someone else. Similarly, jealousy. So people were jealous one another, uh, like of the, of their wealth. They were jealous of their of their status, of their uh, how many <clears throat> money they have, how good dresses they wear, how they eat their foods. So they were jealous about each and everything. And if they do not have to show something like, uh, if they do not have to eat something, rather they were presenting their delicacies in a manner that the people may think that how powerful they are, how rich they are. Okay, so they have to arrange their, their dinners, their lunches, their breakfasts, in a sense that the people may think how rich they are, how wealthy people they are, even though there was no such a thing. How much two people can eat? <clears throat> how much three people or four people can eat? But they had to give the feasts and the gala parties as they are giving to 50 plus people. So the, the table was full of different delicacies, the table was full of different food items, uh, all the time and after the party is ended or over then the whole food goes to dust so we see that it was about the jealousy that jealousy of the status jealousy of the of the of the uh, wealth the jealousy of the power then the intrigue of an artificial society so like you see that 
the people of the middle classes they also have a greed they also have an intrigue and incline inclination towards the, the artificial society that is the new society like as you say that we are all most of the time follow the standards of the elite people or the elite classes we have some intrigue we have some inclinations to to follow them so there was the intrigue of an artificial society they were showing their lives in an exotic manner that everyone around there was interested to follow them <clears throat> because they think that they are the people the most civilized people educated people good people and we must follow them because they all the time presented their life with artificiality then it always seeks to give a real picture of one section of contemporary life so now what is that one picture of one section of contemporary life writers the playwrights they are all the time talking about the people belonging to elite classes they are ignoring the other important subjects and issues of the society related with or related to the poor people or the middle classes but their focus is on the lives of the elite class people this is their concern they are not concerned with that what about the poor people in society don't they need to raise their issues don't they need to solve their issues because if they will be given the voice in the in the in the subjects they then there will be a solution for them but they are not doing so it means that it always seeks to give a real picture of section so what that one section of society was all the time at the top and their manners attitudes and other things are discussed so this was you can say that real picture of one section the other classes were ignored its purpose is to give a criticism of society with skillful satirical uh, satiric touches so definitely we see that if you are talking about the lives of the elite people in a way that they are seems to seem to be ridiculed they are made of uh, they are i would i would say that in a funny manner in a ridiculous manner if they are presented so what is actually the purpose of doing so the purpose is actually the criticism but with skillful satiric touches and what is you know that satire is all the time making fun of the people or giving some uh, some comic relief to the people in a way so that the people or the readers especially may stick to with the idea and they must study that work so that they may know that what is going on in the society or specifically in the elite class it okay so all the time the writers they managed to talk about the elite class in a satirical way in a satirical way so they shared some some uh, their their satirical remarks on the people the lives of the people their foolish actions their foolies so that the people the other people or the audience they may understand that what is going on in the lives of the elite people because directly you see that the poor or the mediocre people they are not fully aware of the lives of the people because they are busy in interacting with their own people interacting with the one another they are actually contesting with one another with their power with their wealth with their statuses so they do not have the time to talk about or to interact with the poor people or the others other that is the reason that they have been satirically remarked in the books in the writings so that the other people may also understand that you do not be so foolish to talk about these people these are the things that they are doing to be unaware from your sides
then its success depends on the dramatist's capacity to present the unemotional treatment of taxi. So now you see that the way of uh, doing such unethical things is very easy for them. And this is not the way, as you see in the previous ages, that even though the people were frightened to use this word of sex in their times. But with the, oh, with the you can say, uh, the ascension of the new throne or the new king, this word has been used explicitly or commonly in the society and the people were more and more inclined towards the treatment of the sexism in the restoration society. And this was, I would say, that uh, the common spoken word famous at that time. And because of this, people, they were more into it. There were different brothels, there were different uh, prostitutes, uh, prostitutions, the institutions, especially of this, because uh, in France, if you look at the civilization of France, there were different institutions where they have been teaching the sex education to the people, especially to the uh, to the uh, to the elite classes. They were training their women how you can fulfill uh, the emotional outbreak of the people, how you are going to uh, seduce them, how you are going to fulfill their desires. So all these things, they were the unemotional treatment of the sex at that time. And they were very famous in that thing because they were influenced strongly by the French people. And the French people, they were, uh, you can say, they had the command on such things. The comedy of manners is rich with wit and satire. It gives the image of the time. So it was a rich and wit, and, uh, wit with the satire because the writers have presented what they have seen, what they have observed. And if they have observed such thing in that society, so they have talked about them. So there is nothing that we can say. So this is a realistic picture of that society. And it is presented in a good way by all the writers. So whether it is the satire, whether it is something else, but you know, at least they have, they have dared to talk about the foolies of the elite class in a sceptical manner. And this is the, you can say, the real image of the time. Okay, so the heroine is more important and interesting than the hero in it. So you see that the heroine, the most of the time, they present themselves as the most dandy characters, most, uh, you will say, that sensuous characters in front of the audience. And the audience are more inclined towards the female hero instead of the male hero. You see, there is, a, there is some reason. Because the people were full of lusts and greeds, and whenever a heroine is on the stage wearing some uh, a vulgar dress, dresses, so they, that heroine is the center of the crowd all the time. So people were, were more interested in them. So the hero of this type of comedy is well-born, well-dressed, and capable of contest of wit. On the other side, we see that the hero, hero is also well-born, well-built, well-dressed, and capable of contest of it. So he can argue with the people with his intelligence, with his good knowledge, with his, with his good thinking. He can also argue and make arguments with the people with his intelligence. He is not a kind of, you can say, a man who does not have any knowledge about anything. He has the knowledge, but a mixed character. The heroine is also a paradox of virtues and affections. She is as self-possessed and witty as her male opponent. So you see that she has also been given a, an equal space in that society. The heroine and the hero, they both are given the equal space in the society. 
so she it it is not that she is only a commodity of the male people she is only a playing a role of prostitute in the society no she is self possessed and witty also and she can easily compete with the male opponents of that society okay so that is the i think that they were they are more into it they are surrounded by a set of false wit how poets who carelessly laugh at old social and moral gods so they are surrounded by a set of fox wits half wits who carelessly so these are the different sections of uh, of that society like first of all the the, the fox then the wits then the half wits and you see that uh, whenever they are some uh, half of wits and full wits who carelessly laugh at all uh, social and moral gods it means the society is divided with all the characters with all the characters and everyone is uh, everyone is there like all the characters uh, even though the intelligent characters or the or the petty scholars the, the half intelligent people they even though they all, all know about the social codes and morals and they are also the part of that society whoever manners means equality acquired by a person from free social intercourse with cultivated men and so you see that manners means equality equality acquired by a person so just simply take a man of the restoration of of that age and study that man and badly and if you study the interaction of that person with the society if you study the manners of that so, of a person with the society the status the wealth status the financial matters of that person so you will definitely get the same idea of that individual as of the society it means that one man is a one army at that time so it is taken so manners are taken by every individual of the society specifically the elite class of the elite section and this is all about the manners or the etiquettes or the mannerism the behaviors of those people with the other people and they are cultivated they are cultivated they are not you can say uh, inborn rather they are cultivated they are learned behaviors instead of they are you can say the inborn qualities of 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 the of them rather they are learned behaviors and i hope so that uh, yes how much time we have more nafe are you people even to hear or not okay that's good uh till now we just need to take a break uh, and i will just take your questions if you have any about the things that we have discussed yes anyone you can ask free to ask any question related to the things that we have discussed yeah go on it is your time sir why the comedy of manners is all about elite class why it is all about uh, elite class not involving other classes uh see we have why the people are actually uh, showing their uh their immoralities and all of the other things related to their statuses in the society the poor people they do not have the time for such things they do not have the time the middle middle class people because they are the working classes they are the peasants they are the farmers they are the working classes they do not have uh, you can say a time such time to to sh- to do this thing but it is only the uh, uh you can say the image of the standard of the elite class people that they are all the time showing their manners and ethics like this because we see that they are setting the standards of the society and they are following the standards of the society and the strong influence of the french culture goes on them not only poor people or the the middle and when you talk about that they have enough money 
to do such things but the poor people or the middle class people they do not have such enough money to do such things it means that they are totally unaware from the other classes of the society but they are more into them and they are doing these things not willingly but there is a strong influence of uh, i would say of the culture of the language of of the fashion fashion dressing uh, uh, fashion style or the fashion sense of the french people so they, they are not deliberately doing this rather they they have learned to do this thing in the society and they are doing so okay so the poor people and the other they are just dying because of the hunger they are they are doing their other uh, works and jobs how they can do that so this is i would say ke jo kaam hai wo aise logon ka hai jo ke uh in sari ki sari cheezon se in sari anxieties and worries se they are deprived of the poor people and the middle class people they are not deprived of such anxieties and worries of okay yes anyone else hello are you so no question at all no question are you my students all i cannot see that there are my students and they are not asking like uh, in other terms it means that you have understood something or if you don't then you don't ask in both the cases you did not ask if you understand something and if you don't understand something okay just so we can continue now uh, are you uh, people taking notes yes sir okay okay so the restoration comedy is called comedy of manners as it presented the superficial habits and manners of only a section only a section of the society the elegant aristocracy with their vices intrigues and outward glamour of polish behaviors now you see this this also describes the whole restoration comedy that is also called comedy of manners because it presented not the real habits but the superficial habits and manners of only one section and that you already know that what who is that one section it talks about the elegant aristocracy with their vices with their with their wrong doings with their foolies then intrigues and outward glamour of polished behaviors so now you see that it also increases and inclines an outward glamour that is not inward glamour but they have some they have their polished behaviors they have their i would say that um, a kind of masks a kind of persona that they have done all the time on their faces not to show their real faces to the people and they are just indulged and uh, busy in making the other people inferior all the time so we see that their vices their intrigues they have an outward persona that is i would i would call that superficial that is not real persona that is not the real character but they have another character real in themselves but they are not letting the people know about that hidden persona hidden character hidden personality rather that is a real character but they are not letting the people show then the manners displayed were the affections and the cultured veneer of the society so now you see that the manner displayed were the affections and 
be cultured. So now, cultured veneer of the society. So you see that what is the veneer in the uh, in the dialogue, in the famous dialogue of uh, V for Vandetta, he also used this word veneer. It means to disguise something, to disguise something with uh, with apparent goodness. Okay, you are just showing something, sh showing your goodness, but you are inside hiding the badness as well. So your face is not real. You are disguising something. You just pretend to be, I would say you are pretend to be good with the people, but actually you are not good with the people. Okay, so this is a cultured veneer. It means it is a fabricated ready-made veneer of the society that everyone around there is not showing their real faces they are hiding it they are disguising their good faces they are pretending to be good but they are not in real sense good people then amorous intrigue played a very crucial part in the action of the drama so amorous you see that most of the time, amorous means a kind of uh, that is related to the uh, provoking of the sexual desires, the arousal of the sexual desires. You see that uh, amorous intrigue, it plays a crucial part in the action of the drama. People are interested in one thing. That is the amorous thing. That is about the sex. That is, they are interested in one thing. Like, they will not be wasting. Definitely, there is some play and performance in any uh, in any stage, on any stage, or in any theater. The elite class will not waste their time to go over there, and when they see the morality, the goodness, the angels, and the God, and the other things, will they enjoy this? Never. They will not enjoy this. Because they are already made up a culture with the thing that they, these things are not acceptable anymore because previously they are done with it in the Puritanism. So they are, there is no more space of such thing in that society. But there is one thing that they want all the time. That is the amorous. That is the sexual pleasures, the desires. And this is they also need to have in the characters who are playing on the stage. If they they are full of this, then they are enjoying them. Otherwise, they are out of it. And then, as an artist, artistic piece of literature, uh, the restoration comedy of manners mirrored the the latent society of the day. Okay. So now that. The Latin society of the day <clears throat> is all about definitely the showy thing. It is about the non-seriousness. It is about the aloofness, unfriendly behaviors. This is not about the social, I would say that uh, uh, mannered things or that mannered behaviors. No, rather it is about the coarseness. Rather the, 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 the latent means a kind of you can say showy person, non-serious, or having some uh, aloofness or unfriendly behavior. So, and an artist of piece of li uh, literature, the restoration comedy of manners, mirror the, the Latin society of the day. And definitely, you know that if they would have been serious about something, they would have been more. I would say civilized, more educated, more moral. Educated, civilized in the terms of goodness, I'm talking about. Because if they are belonging to such a class, they are civilized because they are showing those. But in a realistic sense, in a realistic sense, they were not. So they were all the time just uh, showing themselves, showing their non serious attitudes towards everything that we are making uh, fun of the things. Then the exquisitive 
poetry of Elizabethan comedy gives place to prose in Restoration comedy, the poetry being reserved for the more rapturous moments. So now, definitely, comedy of manners gives a prose to Restoration comedy, and uh, that uh, comedy is also full of uh, rapturous moments. Rapturous moments, uh, full of excitements, full of joys, full of pleasures, full of desires, full of, uh, I would say, the uh, other things related to this. So all these things, they were full of such things, by like such of uh, desires and excitements, because uh, their intention was all the time to to amuse the people, to amuse the audience. They were not interested, and they were not. I would say, in, 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 the, in the moralities, in the goodness, in the other things. So, uh, elite society was not uh, interested in morality, in, in good deeds and virtues, but they were, they were, I would say, inclined towards the voluptuousness of life, where everything seems according to their uh, standards and the lifestyles. So this is what they wanted all the time, where everything seems possible for them and in an easy way. The main plot is very often accompanied by subplots, sometimes more than one, all revolving around the extra marital affairs and sexual intrigue. So extra extra marital affairs, like their intentions are to show off their knowledge, to show off their wealth, to show off their status. And this was the thing that appealed the other women, the other people all the time. Like, I would not say that this was the thing that only appealed the women of that time. Because, you, as you already know, that James too, he brought the gaiety, gayism, or homosexuality from the France into there into England. So that was another case. That was another case that people were involved in extramarital affairs. They were having more than eight or nine or ten women at a time. And they they were not faithful to their wives. They were not loyal to their wives. And all in return, if they were not loyal, so their wives were also not loyal to them. They were also uh, indulged in extramarital affairs with other people as well. In the comedy of manners, the passion and emotion are replaced by a rapier sharp wit with a uh, twist line polish and hardness. So, rapier sharp wit, like a, a, a point to which I would say that uh, uh, the most intelligent wit most intelligent witch with a crystalline polish and hardness. So how now the pa passion and emotion, they are replaced, replaced by the, the pointy intelligence, I would call it, the sharp intelligence. And that sharp intelligence was crystalline with or polished with hardness. It means there is no space of passion and emotion. Rather, they are replaced by uh, wit. That point, your sharp wit. What is that sharp wit? You say that when the people have talked with one another, they were all the time talking with jealousy. They were talking with a view, oh, I do not care about such things. No. Like, I would call it differentiation. And this one word differentiation defines the whole class, the whole elite class, because they are all the time uh, busy in making themselves different and distinguished from the other people by doing some extra and super extra and I would say ultra. Most of the time they are doing this just to make themselves more uh, superior than the other people in the society. So it, it means that there is no space of passion and emotions of the people that if someone will be feeling oh uh, he's poor so you must be humble to them no there is no way of such things rather the thing is that you are busy all the time to 
make the people inferior with their pointy and sharp arguments. So this is the thing that is. So then Bernini uh, Jabri called this bonanza of bit. Really. So this is the bonanza of bit that is called the verbal uh, pyrotechnics. So that is verbal pyrotechnics. You know that bonanza is all about uh, rather the meaning of bonanza that you already know about. But the meaning is that having some value, having some worth, okay, like in the in the uh, momentarily matters. So this is called the bonanza of which the the mind of intelligent people, and it is also uh, titled as the verbal pyrotechnics. So it is actually you can say having the importance of a firework of an explosive. It means that it has really the sparkling effect on the lives of the people, on the wits of the people, because they are called the verbal pyrotechnics. So it has you can see the spike, sparkling, the shining influence on the lives of the people. Then uh, Dr. Jones calls the characters intellectual gladiators. Another good word. So the intellectual gladiators, because they are, uh, they are fighting, they are fighting with one another, they are fighting with, with each other, but with intellectual dialogues, with intellectuality, uh, they are contest contesting with one another, with, with, the, uh, with their sharpness of wit and intelligence, and they are winning those wars. Then, the scintillating dialogues with their quick repartees and discussions of the marital relations reflect the contemporary society milieu. Okay, now we see that uh, even if they are intellectual gladiators and uh, most of the time their discussions of marital reflections reflect the contemporary social uh, milieu. Uh, Melia is actually the environment. It is the environment you can call it. It is uh, the, the atmosphere, it is the society, it is the decorum of that society, how the people are actually influenced by this decorum, how the contemporary social uh, milayas are, uh, you can say, affected by this, this type of things. Okay, so we, we see that the, uh, the scintillating dialogues with its good uh, rapties and discussions of marital reflections, uh, they are most of the time, uh, uh, most of the time, making impressions or uh, doing something great, not for the interest of the people, but for their things, but for their knowledge. Okay, so this is a uh, scintillating dialogue, means that they are uh, impressive dialogues, they are making the people that to understand that you are impressive in your arguments, you are impressive in your talks, and uh, you must be listened. They are like this. The characters of the manner uh, of the of the of the manner comedy are mostly types with descriptive names. There are sexually frustrated widows, barks, country squires, and folks with names like Sir. Uh, Fopling Flutter, Colonel Belly, Squire Sullen, Lady Bountiful, and Sir John Brute. Okay, so they have their descriptive names. This is that you will also see in the Victorian comedy of manners, where you will feel their descriptive names are they are they are actually showing their personalities. They are showing their actions. Those descriptive names are showing their interactions with the people. So those names will also tell you about the descriptive. Because there is one example from uh, the importance of being a nest in which Jack is the one who is having dual personalities. Jack is having two names. The one name belongs to the village and the second name belongs to uh, the city, village and city. So he is using two names just uh, because whenever he is in city, so he is actually making himself 
uh, a uh, belonging to as he belongs to a an elite class or a high class but when he is in a village so he is using another name because people there already know about him. so we can say that how the descriptive names describe their personalities okay, so the last one is restoration comedies dealt exclusively with the social elite and were town based hazlitt commented about restoration comedy what a rustle of silks and waving of plumes okay so now the restoration comedy is all about you can say uh, uh, the rustle is actually uh, the sneaking sound of something it is a, like a crunchy sound of something and rustles of silks and waving of plumes it means you are most of the time talking about those sophisticated and well mannered people and uh, they did not have seen the hardships of the life they did not have seen uh, the, the, the 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 level of poverty they did not did not have seen anything uh, i would say hard rather they are the plumes they are only the people like the like the petals like the roses like the flowers and they do not know anything about the hardships of the real life so they usually had london or some other fashionable resort like bath as their hotel so they are most of the time living in the cities living in the towns and uh, this is their locale this is their place where they are living all the time where they are showing their uh, virtues and affections to one another where they are busy in contesting their virtues contesting their intelligences with one another with their sharpy and uh, pointy intelligence okay so this is all about today's uh, background of the comedy of manners and i hope so that you have understood each and everything that we have talked about and uh, still we have 5 minutes more and if you have any question you may ask it right now yes it's over to you yes any question okay that is sharp wit is like a satire like if i sometime or most of the time criticizing the people just to make yourself different from them like sometimes you use a way to talk with the people oh i do not care about this because my husband bought this bangalore for me and uh, i have a i have this luxury i have that delicacy in my so like it is all the time a point of it just to make the people in failure and it is a kind if you can say the sharp way to discuss something with one another and it is include definitely the intelligence the intelligence too because you are not nominating that person directly you are saying it in a manner that that people that person will understand but not with the direct talk but with indirect talk or with indirect argument so that is that i would say the sharp argument the sharp intelligence or the point intelligence like a sword it 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 you can say hits like a sword on the people when they listen it and this is full of jealousy this is full of greed this is full of you can say uh, status consciousness then this these are the thing that make that sword more sharp that make uh, more i would say uh, pointy to kill the other person with the talk with the argument not with the real sword is that clear yes any other question yes sir Yes, in Russia. Uh, sir, what was the reaction of uh, elite people uh, when they see that people are making or fun, or portray, uh, or many things in front of other people? Okay, uh, your question. I got your question. Just one minute, because Doctor Aruj Aruj has just asked me to 
send the paper link just one minute okay, then sir. i will respond to you okay sir do you have a, 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 another class at 10 uh, no sir okay that's good then. i'll be responding to you okay uh, okay if anyone else have any question you can also uh keep your questions in mind because i'll be asking once again that if you have so is the people link Okay, it is done. Yes, Nibra. What was your question? You were saying that why these people are criticized by them. I uh, said I am asking that. What uh, was the reaction of elite people when they see that people are making our fun? Uh, they are actually uh, were not. I would say that attached with those people and with their argument. They were not even though uh, concerned about what the people say. because i think that this one section was totally different from the other classes of the society and they the people they cannot approach them the middle people the poor class people they can never approach the elite classes they can never do that so we see that they were all the time if there is one servant or one uh, maid from the poor or the from the middle class then, even though they were not from the poor class they were from the middle class in any any servant or ayas or you can say the maids so they were actually also cultured with that thing they were also cultured with that thing. so they would have nothing to do to criticize or to say something about the elite people because they do not have any interaction elite class does not have any interaction with other classes so they have no i would say reason to or cause to say something about it. is that fine okay sir yeah yes anyone else just be quick because uh the battery is about to die the light is gone so yes you have to be quick if you want to ask something okay i think if there is no question so i i i i hope so that today's lecture was uh, understandable for you people it was good for you people and uh, i wish so that uh, yes nimra do you want to ask something uh no sir okay so take care allah hafiz and inshallah we will meet you in the next class bye bye okay sir